Thank you. $3.8 trillion is the amount the federal government spends every year. And that money is managed through the thousands of bills that are introduced in Congress that few follow or even know about. Billions are directed at influencing that money, at influencing those bills in the form of political ads, direct lobbying, indirect lobbying, and issue ads. And those on K Street, the lobbyists, they focus their attention very directly like a laser on the policies that they want to influence. When the voices of the people are diffused and unfocused and sometimes ineffective. The traditional social media is not equipped to deal with Congress. This is not an ideal way to get a message in. In fact, the social media that exists in many cases, the technology that makes it easier to get a message in, makes it harder for the messages to be actually heard. So on the Hill, you have about 350 million messages coming in, increasing exponentially, and a decrease in staff every year. It's been about a 37% decrease since 1979. This is the Lucy and Ethel in the chocolate factory effect. They can't keep up. Three players in this game, the interest groups, the Congress, and the people, and the Pop Fox team knows this world very well. Interest groups are trying uh, to get quantity to, to make a difference, to break through with quantity. They're paying list building services and they're overwhelming Congress, which can't hear the messages that are coming through. And for the people, the only option is to scream louder. We understand this world very well because we come from it. This is actually a room that I spent about 14 hours in one day, the Ways and Means Hearing Room. I was a congressional staff on both the committee and personal staff side. Josh Tauber, our ICTO, is known as the grandfather of the Congressional Open Data Movement, and he's younger than I am, so that gives you an idea of how young this movement is. Uh, but he's the man who built GovTrack, which uh, aggregates and, and pulls all the information about legislative data that goes through the Library of Congress and spits it out in an API. Roshna Chowdhury, our CMO, spent 12 years as an advocate uh, lobbying the Hill and running legislative campaigns. So we know what we're talking about. We know Congress. And the solution we've built takes the voice of the people and focuses it into issues and funnels it directly into action points that can have an effect. This is how it works. So we take the official bill data that comes from Congress, we combine it and provide an opportunity for advocates to weigh in and express their opinion to support or oppose the legislation. That's combined with constituent comments that come through the site and the analytics that, are, that we glean as people weigh in. And all of that is combined into the bill report. This is, for the first time, metadata for legislation pending before Congress. And this is kind of the user experience and the way it works. People come to the site and they select a bill. Then they research the bill. They look at the positions of the various um, groups that have taken a pos position to endorse or oppose on the, on the bill. And then they weigh in. They're encouraged to leave a comment and that comment is forwarded to the appropriate office electronically, and it also stays on the site associated with the bill as user-generated content. And then the individual user can share that comment, or anyone else who's on the site who finds the comment that resonates with them can share the comment. And then the individual follows prompts based on their activity to other um, bills that they might find interesting. You took action to save the whales, maybe you'd like to save the dolphins, et cetera. This is a, an example of what the bill report looks like. You get a map that shows support across the country. You can drill down into districts. You can drill down into state. And you, can, you would also see the comments that relate to those districts and states. Right now, we have users in every congressional district. And the comments are very pithy and tend to tell the user's individual story. This is business intelligence for bills, the kind of analytics that were discussed in the previous presentation. Imagine that Congress doesn't have this at all now. And so this is, this is an example of the kind of dashboard that a legislative staffer would have access to. Those issue breakdowns follow the kinds, of, uh, profile, the kinds of issues that they need to follow on a daily basis. And then they would get prompts for the hot bills in their state. Um, groups get a view of how people are really talking about the issues. Um, they get an idea of who would be a potential collaborator to, um, to work with them on the issue. They get conversion and activation metrics to show their funders and the people behind them. Our, our model is a freemium model uh, with uh, paid services uh, for advocates uh, 
a pro version that allows them to have access to that kind of dashboard I just, saw, I just showed you before. Input is always free. Popbox is a deal room for legislation. Now we're all in on the deal. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, what are your thoughts? I love the space. Um, I think there's lots of money involved. <laughs> it's a well-defined problem. You've done a great job of defining what the problem is. Um, I think we all know it's only going to get worse in terms of uh, end users wanting to advocate on behalf of government and government's inability to respond to that. Um, so I like all that. <clears throat> what I'd like to know from you is if I take the various groups, if I take companies or individuals or groups that want to advocate, mm -hmm. the lobbyists that help them manage that process, mm -hmm. and then government who receives all this inbound, who is your tool most designed for, or is it all of them? And which part of those do you think you can monetize the best? Where's the money going to come from? I was waiting for this question. So th the tool is designed for all. It actually is, is designed to align the incentives of all, which is definitely not the case now. Right. But the lobbyist who comes in to meet with a congressional staffer needs to show actual support in the district. They're, they're really bolstered by a story from a constituent that says, this is why this is really important to me. Right. And they're also really helped if they can show that actual support in the district. And it's really helpful for them if the information that they're trying to get in front of the congressional staffer is available in this document collaboration space where they're not trying to constantly update the one pager or add a name to the coalition that they just sent a letter about yesterday that changed again. Uh, so it's for all three, and by getting the attention and the focus of the congressional staffer, you solve the, the problem of all three who's you know, trying to, to rise uh, up to the top. But the monetization is on the organizations and businesses who would pay for that, that um, premium service. And so the premium service is uh, tools for building coalitions. It's the kind of legislative intelligence um, dashboard that I showed you before. Uh, it's... Oh, Yes. Yeah, so uh, that's answered my question really well. Right. And then the second thing is, can you give us a sense of when you launched, how long the product's been around, what the usage and adoption has sure. been? So we're very, very new. We put out a product in a very, very, very soft launch at the, the beginning of November, and we knew it would be a soft launch because this was the lame duck period. This is when Congress was, has, was coming back from the election and just kind of going through uh, end of year things. So we put it out, we kind of tried it. We weren't getting messages into Congress at the time because that's an extremely complex problem that we just solved. Uh, and so we rolled it back in over the holidays as, as the new Congress was coming on board. And so then in the beginning of January, we got a new Congress, we put the site out with the new congressional information and, have, and just started the outreach for real. Uh, that's included uh, going to the Hill and starting to meet with uh, congressional staffers. We needed massive individual users before we had something for congressional staffers to see. So we're just into that now. We're at about 6,000 users. Uh, and the traffic is, we're probably at about 60,000 uniques now. Great. Panelists. So uh, in terms of getting more distribution and getting more customers uh, of the four groups, uh, what's your plan for getting uh, all four groups to come on to this platform? That's the first question. And the second question is, uh, how, how are you going to build a moat around the business so that someone doesn't, how will you build a moat or a defensibility around the business so that someone doesn't just copy what you have and try to get more users on their platform? Yeah. So I'd like to answer the second question first, which is kind of what is our competitive advantage? And in many ways, that's our CTO. It's the guy who designed the system that pulls the legislative data from the Library of Congress. That's a very complex issue that um, I mean, he's the guy that people go to in Washington when they want to talk about congressional data. And so building this platform that's completely designed around congressional bills and understanding how that information goes through and, and uh, gets to Congress. So that second piece that I just talked about, the congressional delivery piece, is also a huge technical challenge to climb. Uh, I think probably you've heard about some other business plans that hand deliver messages to Congress. They don't do that because Congress says we really like hand-delivered messages. They do that because of this overwhelming deluge of messages coming in. Many offices have erected barriers to messages coming in. We're both finding a way through the web forms and also providing Congress with the information that they want so that they open their doors to us. 
by tying the input to the individual bill and the position and giving it special tags that identify the issue, we are for the first time asking them what they want rather than starting from the opposite direction. As far as how we get more users on, uh, right now our primary uh, traffic source is, is GovTrack. So that's the legislative information site that Josh built. It's just a, a link on there that says you're researching this bill, go weigh in on Popbox. What we found is that one pe once people make that original visit, they start to share. This is, you know, it's, it's designed so that when you care about an issue, you, you share via Twitter, you share via Facebook, People understand that building, you know, getting that map filled in is effective advocacy. And we'll be giving them little tips along the way as we go forward. You know, hey, you just, you know, signed on to do this. Now if you find 10 friends, you can increase your voice, et cetera. We're kind of just getting into those cues that help work people through the process. But we're also working with the organizations, and this is really probably what you were getting at. Um, Rashna, this is a, a big part of her background, actually, is um, being in that world. I mean, she's, she's super connected and, and understands their needs and so when she goes and sits down with both the online activism people in an organization and the lobbyists in the organization who frequently don't actually talk to each other because they don't understand the value that they bring, um, she's able to say, I understand that you need this and I understand that you need that and let me show you how this platform accomplishes both. Is there any approval process on the government side to be able to use this product do they have the uh, technical ability to do so and the resources to deal with it? You know, there are so many levels to that question in different mm -hmm. places I can go. The first thing I would say is many people have tried to build applications for Congress and failed because of the institutional barriers that exist, whether it's ranking limitations or, you know, there are, to build a product that you're going to give to them would be like giving a gift, which you can't go give a, an right. elected official a gift. But you can build a Google, and they'd just be silly if they didn't use it. And so that's kind of the model that we're going for. But again, by making all of the comments public, the bill reports public, uh, we make it not only, they don't have to go adopt it. Their lives will be much easier if they go create an account and they have the legislative dashboard and they have specific information for their constituents. Their lives will be easier, but even if they don't, those messages are in their inbox and they're public so their local newspaper can say, hey, how about this story? What do you think about this? Paul? So I, I, that kind of relates maybe to my question, which is if they're already trying to keep out all these messages, if they're already overwhelmed, are they really going to welcome yet another source of messages flooding in? Well, you know, that's the great irony, is that they're trying to keep out what's called the astroturf. They're trying to keep out the flood, but they really do want to hear from constituents. So that's, this is what we were talking about before the misalignment of incentives, because right now, it, nobody is getting what they want right now. Congress really does want to hear from their constituents. Nobody else, but their constituents, yes. And so to actually be able to see on a particular bill, here's the pie chart, here's what people are saying, and even very soon the ability for individuals to help curate those comments so the really pithy ones rise to the top, that's a service for Congress, and not only can they see what their constituents are saying, they can see what other people's constituents are saying. So I just happened to be in a committee meeting with you, and I'll say, but how are you, you know, I, I want you to co-sponsor co my bill because Mrs. Jones from your district says this will really help her business. You know, you should consider it. So it's really giving them another tool. And with that, we are out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.